All right, just doing a quick little video of the origami that's done so far. Don't mind the org the organic bananas in the background. <laughs> But yeah, so that are, that there are <laughs> the pieces that I have done so far. Still plan on getting a few more done. So realistically, we're probably somewhere between three to five days before I even try to show them to anybody. I don't know. We'll see. We still want to get some beads on them. And there are still things I need to deal with, so I'm going to turn this off, turn this around, and talk a little bit about that. Be right back. All right. Well, hey, everybody. From the end of the day, after a quick little one from the start of this morning, um, all sincerity, it's been a very, very casual day. Uh, I had the one Instacart this morning for 60 bucks, and then just honestly decided that that was a... Uh, that was good for the day. You know, it really was. <laughs> I I had no idea what I was going to expect or, or find. Um, as I had said last night, my, my desire was to get out of Lincoln City by about 4.30, 4.45 this morning. That didn't happen. Um, and again, like I said, I'm not mad at Lincoln City at all. I'm really not. It's just it's just not my jam. Um, unfortunately, one of the things I noticed about Chinook Winds after I'd finally turned everything off and got ready to truly uh, close down and bed down for the night, they have to have a dance floor or a performance hall or something in there. Because... Uh, <laughs> Even as far as way as I was, there was a just kind of going through the air, you know, just the actual bass was just <laughs> when you feel like you got night at the Roxbury in the back of your uh, sound system somewhere, it's it's kind of hard to fall asleep. <laughs> So it took me a little longer to get to sleep than I had anticipated. So I actually didn't even wake up till like 5.30 this morning. And uh, got up, got going, no coffee, no breakfast. I'm just like, get to Newport right now. <laughs> <coughs> and so I pulled into the Safeway parking lot, which is, again, right across the street from Fred Meyer. Pulled in right at about somewhere between 6.05 and 6.10. And turned the van off for a second, grabbed the phone, got myself into Instacart. And right away, a $59 order at uh, Fred Meyer came up. <laughs> I, I was like, yep, I'll take that right now. And it was a it was a nice order. It was a decent order. It was a little over three hundred dollars in actual groceries, so I was in there for a while. Um, Instacart actually tracks exactly how long it takes you to fulfill the order from the moment you accept it till the moment you drop it off. And all told, one hour forty eight minutes. So not bad. Excuse me. I'm gonna hide behind these for a second. There we go. All better. Not major allergies in any way, but plus it's a little, little colder and a little, little foggy, a little misty here today, which has been kind of nice to, uh, a change, but didn't get above 60. But yeah, so I accepted that. It took me an hour and 50 minutes. That's not bad for $59. Right at 30 bucks an hour. That is really right about where I want to be, right? Between 25 to $30 an hour. So living in the van, I really don't have to work more than three or four hours a day and truly be set because I'm going to probably work six hours or six days a week, maybe even seven if I get super bored and be like, oh, let's go out on a Sunday morning and see what we find real quick. And especially with Newport, the way it's turning out, you know, I am literally almost just seconds away from those stores. So 
parking here is a great thing and I, I think I'll find some other good spots as I go along. You know, when I'm, I'm back at that one spot I was at before. I think tomorrow I'll check out the 16 hour spot. And as I said in the one last night, and then I'll probably sleep in one of the uh, Fred Meyer Safeway parking lots just to kind of break my, my appearance up type of thing. But yeah, so that was good. And then we just chilled here. Uh, made a little more origami. And just kind of cleaned and organized a little bit. I got to clean and organize a little bit more. And I also wanted to get to uh, one of the questions uh, my subscriber, Miss Kitty, had asked. Uh, Patrick or Pat? Definitely Pat. Nope, sorry. Definitely not. <laughs> it's uh, Patrick. Patrick or PK? Um, yeah. Yeah, I've been called Patty before too. P-A-D-D-Y by certain friends. And, and I'll let that go far before somebody trying to call me Pat. Because, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a Patrick. I'm, I'm, I'm more than three letters. <laughs> and uh, PK came about because there were people in my years, especially doing as much retail customer interaction as I've done. You introduce, you, <laughs> you introduce yourself as Patrick or Jonathan or Michael. And the person automatically is like, oh, Mike, John, Pat. Well, that's not what I introduced myself as. I'm actually Patrick. And I don't fucking know you, so how did you decide to shorten my name in that amount of time? <laughs> now, to not give that face to people sometimes when I'm trying to sell them something, PK came about because then at least you are saying the first and last uh, initial letters of my name. And it also happens to be the K is the initial for my middle name as well, which is Kyle. I'm not afraid to hide that. So Patrick Kyle Spellman, that's me. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's that's the answer on that. Um, don't mean to get too gruff about it whatsoever. But yeah, I, I, I'm not a fan of Pat. Just never have been. Um be like calling him right here. Nope, oh, sorry, this is Guns N' Roses. I was thinking it was the Johnny Cash one. Be like saying, hey, John, how you doing? I'm Johnny Cash. Hey, John Cash. Yeah, I'm Patrick. <laughs> uh, other than that, I'm just going to kind of chill out and uh, watch. It looks like probably just a little YouTube. I'll find something on there to watch tonight. Um, the Internet's working. But I don't want to use the laptop as much because the laptop, the battery, isn't storing power like it's supposed to. So I'm running it right off of the Jackery. And in all sincerity, that just takes a lot of power to do that. Whereas I could probably get 9, 10 uses out of the pad right now in comparison to the one use with the computer, with the laptop, before having to charge it again while driving. And, you know, if I'm going to drive like an hour, hour and a half, that's fine. I can take it from about 45% to upwards of like 75, 80, you know, depending on if I'm more that two hours or hour and a half. But I don't really want to drive that much each day just to power the, a battery. So, um, you know, and I'm happy for everything I have because I got it for free. Uh, you know, the, the pad and the laptop both were, were kicked down from mom. Um, so the, the fortunate unfortunate is that the pad is just old enough of where certain things are just won't update. So like the, uh, IMDB in, since it's a pad and not a computer, I can't just go to internet IMDB TV watch. No, you have to download the app, but it's an old enough version that it doesn't support our app. So you can't do anything. <laughs> So that was, it was like, again, small problem, big world. But, uh, yeah, so that's why I'll probably just find something on YouTube to watch and, and chill and relax with. Um, it is super cloudy and gray and monochromatic here today, as, as the Oregon Ghost can definitely get. Which, I mean, it was one of those funny things. I mean, yesterday was clear as a bell, and, you know, you saw up in the graveyard just the level of uh, view I had. And then today, we're right back to cloudy and, and monochromatic. It hasn't rained. I mean, it's not raining. It's not cold. It's like 61 degrees. So, I mean, it's coastal weather. Um, there are days even in Venice that felt like this. 
Uh, though it's more like February. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, it's 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 been a good day, and I'm actually excited to see what happens tomorrow, because I'm gonna I'm gonna drive up to the the Freddy's Safeway area as soon as I wake up and see what happens. So nothing exciting, but I thought I'd do an update and answer that one question. And oh yeah. I had kind of an oldie, uh, oldie but a goodie kind of meal tonight. I, I went retro fast food because they actually have an Arctic Circle up here, uh, which I have not seen an Arctic Circle in a decade, maybe two. And we used to have a few of them around the Portland area. So that was kind of nice. Got a double cheeseburger with fries. Wasn't bad. Uh, better than McDonald's, I ain't gonna lie. Better than Carl's Jr. or Burger King or a few of the others. I'd, I think they uh, they have better food. They, they say it's an Angus burger. So they're like black Angus right off the bat. So um, it's a pretty good burger. Uh, so yeah. Uh, they also have fish and chips, which I might try, you know, in like a week or so when I get back. Oh! There is one other big thing to address. How much I already feel like I'm permanently on the road and I'm not. <laughs> um... There is definitely a part of me that, I mean, I'm, I'm so ready to just forward and never go back type of thing, just in the sense of being in the van and, and not going back to Beaverton and dealing with the apartment. But I have to. <laughs> for a couple of reasons. Uh, for one, I still need to get the title to the van. It's still in the mail and on the way, you know, so I, I, I definitely want that in hand before I'm for good and then the other big thing is getting everything sold and really getting the apartment broken down the rest of the way and getting the few things that I definitely forgot to bring with me in here small things I had a couple of other cutting boards I'd like to have in here um, Chuck has a favorite toy I'd like to get that in here Luna has a favorite toy I'd like to get that in here um as well as just a few other odds and ends, and then the rest of it's going to be up for grabs type of thing. Uh, and I probably will take one small run of storage over to Mom's place. Uh, she has a, a storage uh, space I can use. Uh, I think the most I'm going to save would be my Christmas stuff. You know, um, I've got a bunch of masks, and I've been looking at them like, you know, do I really... I got some cool ones. I may keep one of them. One of them is pretty freaking awesome. Um, but I think the rest of them can can sell. And I'm well. And there's even a couple. I'm wondering if I might not be able to fit in this corner over here. I'm considering it. So, the masks uh, t for a complete and total final destination is not known yet. But a lot of the artwork can just go. I've got a big clock that's kind of got that antique look that I think will go well. Um, Aaron's bought a crap ton of the uh, tables and furniture and stuff already. So also when I get back, <clears throat> if he hasn't already pilfered through and grabbed some of it, because he's got a spare key in case I had ever uh, lost mine in any means. He ha I had an automatic way into my apartment, and I gave him the okay of while I was gone if he wanted to go down there and grab some of the stuff he's already bought. He <laughs> got every right as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, and so just getting all of that figured out, getting the, 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 the apartment, obviously, it's last cleaned down. So my real hope, my, my real desire is to really be on the road, like, somewhere between July 3rd and 5th. Probably not going to be the funnest time to come back to the beach in the sense of driving through the weekend traffic, but... I, I am just willing to bet that the title is going to take its sweet-ass time getting here. If by some chance it's actually there when I get back. End of this month, baby. June 31st. Bam! Out. Gone. You know. And then we done. Oh, that's funny. There's a black cat outside. It just made me wonder if Chuck had somehow figured out how to get out. half of me that still wonder if it's her it's not her <laughs> but uh yeah that's how it's going and 
that's really the last of the wrap up is yeah once i get the apartment figured out the rest of the way then i'll really be out of here or be out of there and here permanently which i think you can even tell just with the last few days this is a world i really enjoy it's a world that doesn't shake me too easily i don't freak out much by it you know I, I get it, a lot of people would probably have problems automatically switching over to not having running water, plumbing, shower, sink, you know, right at your disposal, you know, instead of having to use handy wipes and, and a little a little faucet thingy out of, a, out of an actual, you know, jug. So I still have water, it's just a different kind of experience in all sincerity. You use it differently, it's, it's you think about it more. And I think that is one of the things I am, even within this amount of time of being in this van, I'm really kind of loving, is I know that in the end, even if I am Mr. Mr. Potential Smog Machine, which I'm not, she passed, uh, she passed with flying colors when I went and got her checked, but even by living in a van, I'm still leaving a far, far smaller footprint behind me this way than if I'm living in an apartment and all the heat, the electricity, the, the cooling of the air when it's hot, the use of the water, turning the sink on and just because that's what we do even now. I mean, if you're washing dishes or shaving or washing your hands, it's a lot of water used right away. You know, and if you want to say, well, those same thing, they're already here. <laughs> those have already been made I can't do anything about that and I just hope that the ones I buy are the ones that are going to be more, most eco-friendly in their production you know, and they are something that helps me greatly to be able to stay clean without a shower so you know, you give and take you know, a couple hundred dollars a, a month in electricity and bills and the use of water to you know, maybe twenty dollars a month in, in cleaning supplies you know, hopefully it's a smaller footprint and I, I use less resources by the time it's all said and done. So that's part of it. Also, just the joy to do like I did yesterday. I mean, yesterday was really the, okay, you can go play, but tomorrow you got to work. So play hard because you're going to work hard tomorrow. It was one, but it was really a good chunk of what I was hoping to make. Like, I figured I'd get lucky if I made 75 bucks today. So making 60 in one and being done by eight in the morning was nice but uh just being able to go out and find that graveyard and then go down to glennington beach and you know actually be able to find those agates was really cool i mean that was some of the stuff that you know was in the back of my head of doing like yes finding cool graveyards all over the the country eventually i mean new york new orleans is definitely one of those in the far back check marks that needs to be hit again because with this beast I want to be able to, if nothing else, get like an 11 foot ladder in here for half a moment because some of the areas that I want to photograph are permanently walled off. But if I can get a ladder in here, step up on the outside, and then actually take photos of some of those spaces, to me that would be amazing. It might be a photo that sells too. I might put some on video. Um. But yeah, so doing that and then finding the beach with the agates and the different stones, because that's something that's been in the back of the head too, is driftwood, agates, stones, shells. These are things that I can then incorporate with these as well and also make mobiles like the one I have hanging in the front of the van, which is mine, it's not for sale, um, but incorporate pieces of the beaches that I'm at into the artwork as well, making it that much more desirable for some of the places around here to carry them. You know, I'm making stuff right now. I, I, like I, said, I don't know if I'm going to show it to anybody this, this time down. Because this is this was originally only going to be four days. Now it's a full week. And then I have to go home on Wednesday morning and be responsible. But uh, it's just felt so amazing. I just, I've gotten that. I don't want to go back. I just want to go. F I just want to go forward, Johnny. <laughs> You know, because there is, I, I am, I am somebody who's just so relaxed. I mean, this really is, for me, this is perfection. I mean, it, it really, really is. I'm not homeless, you know, I'm not just straight outside. But I'm outside with a nice little shell. Like a big old turtle. 
I can step out of my shell and go do stuff, or I can drive my shell around and go see stuff, you know, find things I would never find any other way. Like that cemetery, I don't think I would have ever found it, you know, if I wasn't doing something like this. It's one of those things you just, you don't often randomly pull over for a cemetery like that, even if it might be cool when you're on a drive like this to the coast. It's not one of the quickest stops. That thing's gorgeous up there. And that view up there is beyond anything you get anywhere else, paying in a hotel or, 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 or what have you. So, yeah, I, I definitely have the uh, expectation that once this is all done and I am back down here, especially on some really wicked, beautiful, sunny day, be middle of July or August, I'm going to be up there, canopy that I have on the outside of this thing out, table out, chair out, everything just out chilling for the day in the middle of the week when nobody's up there i'll let the girls out and we'll have a real like you're gonna be outside for two or three hours for the first real time they they'll have outside time you know like i said chuck earlier today was like oh i'm coming out for a moment while you're taking those groceries to the door and she was willing to get right back in but her her nosy little nose poked right on out and she's like oh we're moving we're, we're not moving and there's grass I'm out. <laughs> so, you know, that is something we're going to have to obviously deal with. And, and I have to make a decision. Do I trust my cats? Or do I force them to wear these harnesses that they both absolutely hate and then put a leash on top of them, which makes them go like that and really not want to do anything other than hide under the van and hide from me? So do I want to do that or do I want to trust them? I think I'm going to trust them. Um, Luna's lived 12 years with me and doesn't stray very far at all. And Chuck has reached the point of where she and I have a really, really good relationship. Chuck and I are a story. There's no doubt about it. She is the younger of the two. And I will say at this moment now, Luna has always had a second cat of some sort with her. That's just not a story I'm quite ready to go into tonight. But, so Chuck's only like seven years old. And... So it's different with her. She's not as old as Luna. She's not as chilled out. She's still kind of frisky. It's going to take another couple, three years before she's really ready to just be like, okay, I'm a chill cat. <coughs> you know. So it's more, am I going to trust Chuck? And I think at this point, considering... Because I already saw Luna come back into the van after being outside. So she knows this is home. And when Chuck was outside with me, she was basically loving on the table, loving on the chair, and loving on me. Which means she was marking the table and the chair with, with her scent. And, you know, giving me her scent and, and taking my scent as well. But she was definitely marking those as part of home. You know, and home base. So... I don't know if they're going to get a lot of outdoor time on the rest of this trip. But I think as soon as we get out again, I, I'm going to start finding spots where we can set up. Like I, I saw there's a Silage River place I might be able to pull over and that might be a little more secluded. I could be absolutely wrong. I could be packed like a mofo, but it might be a little more secluded and it might be a spot where they could get out. Um... But if nothing else, I have the graveyard that I love, that I know is safe because I can go all the way to the top, see if cars are coming, and it's just so quiet up there that it would be a really safe open space for them to show. And get used to being outside of the van while still having van as home. And go forward from there. And then hopefully we reach a point of where days where we're parked in places like this Maybe we can reach a point of where the back door can be opened. Luna can sit on the bed with the air fully in her face and Chuck will only be a couple, three feet away on grass and then running back and getting petted and going back out running on grass, coming up and settling down. Yeah, I'm hoping that's, that's what eventually happens because just in all sincerity, for the betterment of their own enjoyment, I think that would be far more fun for them than having to deal with a freaking harness all the time. Yeah. So, yeah, we will see how that goes. I guess that was a little update on the cats and where my mind at was at with them. Um, 
I don't think there's anything. I mean, of course, I can find something to talk about, but I don't think I need to find something to talk about. I think this is getting long enough with me just... <laughs> I'll say this, it's funny, you should watch one, you should see me when I sit down and actually watch one of these with Aaron from time to time, some of the early ones especially, you know, just kind of looking at them, critiquing them, you know, what I, I could do better or what have you, and you know, half the time when I'm sitting next to him, I'm like, my God, this man, he just, he just never shuts up, he just, he never shuts up, which Aaron cackles about, because he knows, sitting with me, he knows. <laughs> So anyway, I really am going to shut up now uh, and enjoy the rest of my night. So peace out, everybody.